Hello and welcome, I'm Josh with US Cutter and today we're going to be showing you the basics of paint mask stencil and we have several kinds of paint mask stencil here at US Cutter today but today we're going to be focusing on our two most popular types of stencils and this is going to be our Green Star paint mask stencil for wood and the Aura Mask Ain't 13 paint mask stencil as well. These stencils have water-based adhesives that are low tack so it won't leave any residue or pull up any paint. I've got several examples ready to show in this video, so let's go ahead and get started with the basics. When cutting your stencil for a wood surface, it's going to be just like cutting adhesive vinyl, with the only difference being when we are in the weeding process. And because this is going on top of wood, we're not going to have to mirror the design, so we can just create it and then cut. All of our machines can work with paint mask with ease, so it doesn't matter what machine you have, all of our machines can cut paint mask with ease. The material isn't that thick at all, so you can use a 45 degree or a 60 degree blade with it. Next, let's talk about the weeding process. Because we're making stencil, we're going to weed away what we usually would keep if we're doing heat transfer vinyl or adhesive vinyl. But weeding the 813 and the Green Star was a breeze. The material doesn't feel like normal sign vinyl or heat transfer vinyl, and because we're going to be working with paint, you want to make sure that you're as accurate as you can be with your weeding tool. You don't want to create a hole or a tear that could let the paint leak through. Once you've completed the weeding process, you want to apply transfer tape over the top of the design. The material is low tack, so going with the medium tack or lower tack is going to be a good option. I'm using transfer right medium tack here for this example, and you can see more information on the transfer tapes we have in another video that we've done in the past. Once the transfer tape has been applied, we can remove the transfers from the backer and then apply them to the wooden substrate. If we are applying to wood that had been cleaned with no dirt, no dust, sawdust, or any of that, the Aura Mask 813 and the Green Star is going to stick with no problem. Now, if it's a painted surface, you want to wait until the paint has finished drying or degassing. This can be anywhere between an hour all the way up to 48 hours depending on how much paint you've used, the area, what type of paint, and how well your ventilation of that area is. Once we have the board nice and clean, I'm going to lay down a single layer of paint and I am no Picasso. I just happen to like to go thrift shopping and I found a French easel for cheap and never got around to gifting it to the person I got it for. So it's mine now. You can also apply the mask directly to wood like I am in this example, but I only applied one layer of paint so it won't take long for this to dry with a box fan in front of it for an hour. Once it is dry, I want to apply the paint mask stencil. Some backstory on this sign, one of my co-workers is always asking me if I like apples and then asking me how I like those apples, etc, etc. So I'm giving him his own imaginary apple farm sign. You're welcome, Brandon. You really want to make sure that you squeegee the mask onto the surface of everything so that it transfers nice and easy and we can start the painting process. When you apply the paint, you want to make sure that you spread it evenly across the surface and don't leave too much on the paint mask stencil itself. If you do, the extra paint will dry and cause the mask to tear apart and break into smaller pieces when you're trying to remove it because of the extra paint on top of it. You also want to make sure that you have a weeding pick for this. That way you can get underneath the paint and actually pull the paint mask up. How about that beautiful sign? So I did this example on a sanded surface, so what if we didn't have a sanded surface? For example, when you apply the mask to a rough surface with some splinters coming up. If the surface isn't painted, the paint mask will stick pretty well to it. The issue is when you're removing the paint mask. Some of those splinters will raise and stick to the adhesive, causing this to happen. When I tried to apply the paint mask to the painted side of it, I had some issues trying to keep the paint mask actually stuck to the painted wood, but I was able to get it to transfer. I did have a few rips and tears, however, so the final result was pretty bad and keep these things in mind if you're about to start a project. Well, that's going to cover the basics for this. We also have a nice PDF guide that you can view, and we made that a little while back, but it's still got some good information. These two paint mask stencils are for wood, but we do have other paint mask stencils for other applications. Green Star has a reusable paint mask stencils with adhesive and without, and you can purchase either one of those. Orcal also has other paint mask stencils that they make, like the 810S for solvent-based paints, or the lower costing 811 for hand painted wood signs as well. Make sure you check out some of the other videos that we've made. And if you like the content, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. 
Uh, feel free to contact our sales team at sales at uscutter.com if you have any questions about any of the products we have here. And if you need any support for anything, just contact our support team at support at uscutter.com. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and have yourself a wonderful day. Take care.